Right, so I'm Ludico, and we are going to have a talk about trichomoniasis. So this is again, as uh, mentioned, is a parasitic infection and um, it's trichomona vaginalis. And from the name of that, it's predominantly uh, uh, symptomatic to women. And this parasite is present in the urogenital tract of women and for men also uh, it affects. So let's go down to it. So there are several uh, species of the trichomonads uh, and they vary with different uh, properties, but they usually have three to five flag free flagella. And they, in addition to, to the flagella, they also have an undulating membrane, um, just like uh, trypanosomes, but unlike, um, uh, unlike giardiasis. And they also have an axostyle, which is a skeletal road, which is a microtubule that helps in mobility. They also have a mouth, which is a cytostome. And this is a you know, picture uh, illustrated version of the trichomonas vaginalis. Uh, it, 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 looks, uh, it looks also like a pear shape, but it has an undulating membrane and has a flagella uh, that has, uh, helps to for mobility. So there are, there are three human uh, species that are differentiated by the type of habitat, the morphology, and whether or not they're able to cross um, infect. And the ones that we're going to focus on today is Trichomona vaginalis, and the others will be just mentioned uh, in passing. So T. vaginalis inhibits the urogenital tract, as I've previously mentioned, and this is the largest of the trichomonads. And um, it's, only, it's the only pathogenic species within the species that infect human. And it has four free flagella and has one of the flagella attached to its indulating membrane, so a total of five um, flagella. Uh, and this is a, uh, is, a, is a visualization of this uh, stained uh, uh, trophozoites. Uh, and compared to other, uh, the, the Giardia, this one exists only in the trophozoite stage. It doesn't have a cyst uh, stage. So you would notice that this is an undulating membrane that is around here. And these are the flagella that's going on around. Remember, this is a, is a unicellular. So it's bigger than, than uh, the uh, Giardia, which is 27 to 18 micrometers uh, in, in, in size, and it doesn't have a cystic stage, and uh, it inhabits the vagina of the female, and urethra, prostate, even the epididymis of the male. And it can even, uh, we'll talk about this when we talk about the pathology, it's usually frequently found in urine samples. So if you want to, to get a sample to diagnose the TV, you have to take it from the urine sample. So this is, they have a, this is a visual of uh, um, trichomona vaginalis seen in, in, under a microscope. They have a typical corkscrew mobility and, and they move around like a corkscrew mobility is known as a typical for, for trichomona vaginalis. You could be asked this uh, question also, how do they move? So you can see them moving around, moving around. This is under a microscope. Uh, it's this uh, urine sample was prepared and I think diamond medium. Um, and you get to appreciate they're really happy they're moving around. So they move rapidly by lashing anterior flagella and by action of an undulating membrane, as we've seen, this is known as a typical corkscrew mobility. And they ingest bacteria, starch and erythrocytes, uh, especially in cultures. Um, but the reproduction is usually by binary longitudinal fission. And they usually multiply best when the uh, pH of the vagina is favorable, which is more acidic. And when you have the lactobacilli in the vagina that produce um, uh, acid, this when they, they flourish best. And they disappear when the urine becomes more um, alkaline. And it's a very common, in terms of epidemiology, it's a common sexually transmitted infection that occurs between 25 to 10% of the women. And there's usually normally co-infected with other sexually transmitted infections. And, and the incidence, as it is known for other sexual transmitted infections, the more number of sexual partners you have, the more uh, risk you have getting this and it's much more common among prostitutes. Um, and it usually uh, flourishes uh, during the reproductive period where you're, you're 
mostly sexually active and and uh, vagina is usually ready for uh, the, the, the optimal pH is there. So both sexes are susceptible, but symptoms occur predominantly in females, but in males, they have also potential, if you if you're left untreated, they might complicate uh, to affect, you know, they might up to the prostate and, and have issues. Yeah, so the trophozoid can survive one to two days in urine uh, and, and two to three hours in wet sponge. And this information is quite important, especially in boarding schools, or even when you're in the bathrooms and you're sharing, uh, showering utensils, um, sponges and things like that, this is not really good um, to, to do because it's a potential transmission setting. Uh, and the modes of transmission mainly do direct contact, either do sexual intercourse or other contaminated fomites like toiletries, toilet seats, um, or you know, passes through birth canal can also infect um, children. So uh, it's, it's usually a cause of persistent vaginitis. This vaginitis is inflammation of the vagina. And the low grade inflammation is usually due to toxic action of the, of the, of the uh, TV and usually gives a lot of uh, burning sensation. Uh, the vaginal walls are usually injected. They have uh, tender and may show petechial hemorrhages uh, and also can go all the way down to the cervix and, and in fact, uh, give petechial hemorrhages to the the cervix. In advanced cases, the granular areas are seen, and the surface is usually covered with seroprurent, grayish, or greenish, yellowish uh, discharge. And the incubation periods can be four days to up to a whole month. And there's this yellowish, greenish discharges that are false smelling, uh, usually typical for uh, trichomonas uh, vaginalis, compared to fungal infections, which would probably have a different type of um, secretions. So this is this is uh, on your left. If you were looking at this this side, this is a cervix, and the, one of the typical features known as a strawberry cervix, because on the other side you see a picture of a strawberry, and you see these potential hemorrhages around um, around the cervix. This is quite a common uh, presentation uh, when it comes to trichomona uh, vaginalis infection. So you shouldn't remember a strawberry when you're looking at. Um, you should. When you're looking at examining a cervix and you see a, a strawberry-like uh, images, you would think of potential um, trachomona vaginalis. So uh, signs are usually vaginal and, and cervical inflammation. There's itching and burning for up to, up to 50% of the patients. There's usually profuse uh, false smelling discharge uh, and at times erosion, sometimes necrosis is observed and symptoms usually are observed to worsen during or after menstruation. And many women experience pain during um, coitus, coitus is sex. So male are usually often asymptomatic, but they may uh, cause mild uh, dysuria, pruritus, or even urethritis. And as I mentioned, it complicates to infections in the prostate. Um, and uh, so the clinically diagnosis, when you want to diagnose a patient with this uh, um, TV, you can do clinical diagnosis, as you have just mentioned the symptoms, but also you can do microscopy, a uh, fresh vaginal discharge that is ob ob observed with the, obtained uh, with a speculum. And, uh, and you can also check prostatic secretion, especially for men, or you can do a uh, digital rectal examination and you do prostatic massage to, to get some prostatic secretion uh, and examine those, or even you know go as basic as urine, if you can get samples there. And the samples, organisms under a microscope, you could see them with the corkscrew jerky movement, uh, as you've seen in the previous um, the video. Uh, uh, there's permanent stain may be made using gemstar, as you've already seen in some previous slides, but also you could culture them in, in, in diamonds medium. And also you could see them uh, uh, to, to, there's this thing called the in-pouch trichomona vaginalis diagnostic uh, systems for culture. And treatment, again, it's the same, metronidazole uh, is the drug of choice. And this one, you could use 250 milligrams for seven to 10 days, uh, uh, or you could use two grams single dose. Uh, there's also vaginal tablets uh, that can be used for metronidazole twice daily for seven days. Um, and also this, uh, this again, I'm going to repeat, uh, metronidazole is not really preferred during pregnancy, so it should not be used there. And you must treat the partner also, um, well, if you have multiple sexual partners, that's a different case. But if you have a long-standing one partner, to make sure that your sexual uh, partner is also simultaneously um, treated. 
And other options like tenidazole, cotrimazole, which is a good option, especially for pregnant um, women. So prevention, measure to use to control sexually transmitted diseases are usually effective. Make sure you use condoms uh, when you have sex, uh, especially with multiple sexual partners and limit the number of sexual partners if you have to and make sure you're clean and personal hygiene is quite um, useful. These other uh, species is like Trichomonas hominis, uh, which is usually inhabiting the large intestine and, and it feeds on enteric bacteria, uh, but it's usually non-pathogenic. It, it could be found in, in uh, diarrheic stools and it, you have five free flagella. And we're not going to get in too much details of T. hominis. Uh, another one, as I mentioned, is, is uh, Trichomonas tenax, which is now available in the mouth cavity, especially in the tonsillar surfaces. And, and uh, sometimes people have mouth teeth that have uh, like tartar, like black uh, around in the cavities. Usually tetanax can be found there and also in diseased gums or past pockets in these diseased gums or, or, or tonsils, or tonsillitis infections. So usually found about 18% of the individuals is usually non-pathogenic, but the presence usually indicates poor oral hygiene. All right, so that's that's all I wanted to share with you today. And um, if you have any questions, now it's the time to ask.